Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam. Um, this is the Code Warriors event coach training. I'm just looking to give you a little bit of preliminary information ahead of the in-person training session, if you can attend, um, what you need to know as somebody who is leading a team for the Code Warriors event at Science Olympiad here. So um, I'll go through this. I'll give you the information that I have for you. Uh, these slides should be accessible for you from the site after we're done here. And then if you have any questions, Questions, we can we can do a quick Q and A at the end, and I'll address everything as well as I'm able. All right. Um, so uh, here's an overview, really quickly, of what we're going to go over. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Um, talk about the event format and rules. We have uh, whatever rule changes we had from last year. Um, how you can get started if you're not sure what you're doing with uh, Python, which is the language we're using this year, and um, some general tips from from me, and then we'll do our Q and A. Okay, uh, my name is Adam. My uh, actual last name is Sanborn. The last name redacted bit is a bit of a joke, um, but the idea is that if you have questions, they shouldn't come to me privately. They should be asked um, on the site so that we can make everything public so that it's fair for all coaches. I'm the event supervisor. This is my second year here with Science Olympiad. Um, I teach programming, introductory programming to high school students at the Career Tech Center in Las Cruz. Um, and I also teach game design to those students as well as some AP computer science to the, the really uh, sharp kids. Uh, I've been teaching AP computer science with Michigan Virtual for um, about nine years, and that's how I kind of got started in teaching programming. Um, and I also wear a lot of other different hats. I, I play cards, I referee basketball, I act, and been in some shows out in Marine City, and a uh, very active person. So you may know me from any number of areas or not at all, but now you know me as uh, the uh, event supervisor here with Science Olympiad. Okay, so um, what we're looking at here is we've got teams of one to two students. Um, they are allowed to bring in one pre-written page of notes front and back if you choose to use all of it. I had a number of teams that did that last year and found it helpful. It's not a requirement by any means. It's just how much preparation you want to help them with. Um, I will be the one proctoring the events, making sure the students are you know, working with each other only. Um, the, the coaches are not allowed in during that um it's uh 30 minutes we're firm on that time there's not extra time i'll give them the five minute warning or what have you but um it's it's 30 minutes so it's fair for everybody um we have a multiple choice questions portion and a hands-on programming portion um we're not a uh, hundred percent settled on the number of questions on the test but it will be a 50 50 split in terms of how points are distributed um and uh the idea is to have these low floor, high ceiling questions. So there should be some sort of easy, medium and hard questions in the multiple choice section. And um, any students can have some kind of success there, regardless of their level of preparation, we hope. Um, and then there are some of those more difficult questions that involve having some expertise from the students. And then we have that topic list that will go out in the official rules document. And you can refer to that to see exactly what they should be um, covering. Okay, uh, so changes from last year, if you were an event coach last year. Last year, we were using JavaScript. I'm not a huge fan of JavaScript. It's it's seeing less use. It's mostly used for um, online programming. Um, Python is now, uh, as of yesterday, when I checked the stats of it, uh, the, the most popular programming language, single most popular. If you look at all the C languages collectively, it's uh, less popular than those, but it's the fastest growing and the most popular programming language um, that there is. And it's really nice uh, to switch to this year, even though it's not my personal favorite language, because it is great for beginners. Um, it's kind of coding for non-coders in general. It looks a lot like the sort of pseudocode that I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and so I think also the skills that the students are going to build here will really tell them if they you know enjoy programming down the road as they get a little bit older. Um, and then last year we had three programming questions, the, the questions the students are answering in free response. We found that to be a bit too many for uh, the students to tackle in the time that we have. So we're reducing that to two. Um, they will still be multi-part questions. So we'll have sort of those, again, low ceiling, high floor, uh, or wait, I said that backwards. Low, low floor, high ceiling? Said that backwards. <laughs> yeah, low floor, high ceiling. So I said that backwards, sorry. Um, uh, the, the idea, the nature of the questions are that students can find some success on those, but they'll need to really have mastered the material in order to do very well on them and get all of the points. All right. So that's the rule changes from last year. Um, I have a list of resources here. Uh, some of them are online compilers that you can use. Uh, um, I, again, these will be these links will all be accessible to you after this presentation. Um, 
we have uh, some, some stuff for beginners. If you are not somebody who has any coding background, uh, W3 Schools and Code Academy are a great place to start, depending on whether you will be looking at that alone ahead of time with your students or you want to look at it with them. Um, if you're going alone, I might go W3 Schools. If you're doing it with the students, Code Academy might be a good place to start. Um, you've also got some resources here that are for the students alone and um, uh, Code Combat is a fun one for kids who are getting started and, and want to do that. I believe there's a free trial that you can use, which should be sufficient for the amount of prep you'll need for an event like this, um, as well as a couple of compilers that they can use to sort of get used to actually writing code in real time. Okay, so um, as a programming teacher, I try to boil down the sort of introductory level stuff, and I'll talk more about this at our actual live event. But um, the, the most important thing here is that the, the kids aren't trying to memorize like how to use a print statement. Um, the, the primary goal here is the problem solving aspect of it, and this is important for, for any sort of programming that's going on. Um, you want to build this, this concept of pseudocode first. Now, the nice thing I said like about Python um, is that the pseudocode looks a lot like the actual code they will write. Python is designed to be written in such a way that if you say print, it's literally going to print what they, what they say in the parentheses there. Um, when you look at the syntax of it, it's very simple and easy to read. Um, that's good because uh, I think writing comments there and, and developing a strategy, and if you've got two students developing a strategy together and practicing that is the best way to tackle these hands-on programming questions in particular. Um, the time management aspect is also going to be critical. I don't think there was a single group that finished every question with uh, much time to spare. I think I think maybe our first place group last year may have finished them all with a couple of minutes to spare, but it was still a pretty near thing. So I think I think having that time management at first when you're working with them, depending on how much time you have to work with the students, you're going to want to be um, just helping them to master the skills, but uh, as you go forward and challenge them a bit more, you're going to want to start to put that timer in, uh, on them. Give them the you know a couple of tricky questions from the site and have them do it in, in, in 20 minutes and then maybe 15 minutes, and so that they can get comfortable with the idea of working against a clock. Um, a general test taking tip and, and one that's especially relevant here when students can easily get hung up on the trickier questions of tracking program flow in coding is go for the easy questions first. You know we've got some easier questions on the test. Those are points are worth just as much as the points that they'll get for the hard questions. So you want to make sure that they develop their confidence and also manage their time well by answering the easier questions first. And then once the students feel a little bit comfortable with what they're doing, obviously, and, and um, I know some of you are, are teachers yourselves and you're very accustomed to this idea, but for those who aren't super familiar, just you know, let them be the ones to drive sort of the level of learning that they're doing and feel confident there. I definitely had teams last year that I could tell from the way that they approached the material, hadn't really been exposed to it much, weren't feeling super confident, and, and we want to make sure not to create that discomfort for them, I suppose, as, as much as um, we can. So I think that this last bullet point here is especially important in, in that get, you know, make sure you're communicating well with your with your students and, and um, get a sense for what they're comfortable with, because this is uh, still a fairly new field and, and one that not every kid has been exposed to, as you know, um, and, and many adults have not been exposed to. Um, we can we can talk a bit. Uh, in the live session about how much support you need as a coach there, but um, you know you you want to you want to treat it as them learning something that is relatively new to them or maybe entirely new to them, and 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 be very responsive to them as much as you can is my advice. Okay, um, so I'll be taking the preliminary questions that you have based on what we've talked about here today. Um, I've kind of gone through the bullet points as well as I can, but if you feel there's something I didn't cover, I mean, I won't, I won't be answering syntax questions today, but uh, you'll want to get a look at the rule sheet. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing with the actual event. Um, and then if, if we have, uh, you know, you'd like to see a problem worked through, or you'd like to see how I would advise, you know, solving a certain kind of problem or something like that, that's what the February 12th live event is for at uh, MISD there. And my understanding, um, is that we're going to have multiple sessions of that. So uh, what questions do you find folks have for me? Hi, Adam. Can you hi. hear me? Uh, the first one who said hi, Adam, you go. <laughs> 
I think that was me. My name's Rory. I was just wondering if you guys would be releasing kind of a more brief summary of like of glossary terms of terms that the kids should know. Um, I'm extremely new to this um, right. as a coach and looking up the, the terms associated with Python, I found pages long <laughs> documents right. of terms. And I just didn't know if there was a, a condensed version. A condensed version that might be. Sure. Um, so uh, obviously in any programming language, you're going to have an endless list of, of keywords and possible methods you can call and all these things. There is a lot to any language. Just like if, if you think of it as something you're more comfortable with, there's a lot to learning algebra. You know, and if you tried to say, here's the thing about algebra, here's a list of all the algebra things that you can possibly do, it, it would be mind boggling. What we have for you already, um, or I suppose we'll be releasing soon on our rule sheet is also the document of focus areas to cover. Um, and then what I would recommend doing is cross-referencing those with the um, the W3 schools or the Code Academy uh, lessons there, and then you can get more comfortable with those things. But yes, we will be narrowing. It's it's not know all of Python or know all of programming. It is it is limited to to certain areas, and that's including things like output statements and loops and arrays and, and there's there's a further list that i don't have right in front of me right now but that that will be on the site yes does that okay, answer your question so yeah. adam you this is john you will be publishing um, some type of a scope document to to uh, go beyond what we already have published uh, a scope document that that's the one that has i believe we've already done that here let me stop my screen share and because i think that's all i have on my slideshow yeah so i'm gonna stop my screen share and stop sharing there we go um let me see while you're looking for that i'm going to yep. ask a question and ask you to do two things at once sure, uh, you, fun. you uh put in and we have other questions that people are wanting to ask as well yep. uh, but you published a list of recommended resources here in the presentation yes. is that a one one for one match with the list that we already have listed on the website no it is not um these are various resources that i think will be helpful to beginners i tried to describe sort of what they are for okay so so uh, event coaches should look both at this list as well as the list uh, of resources that are are listed online okay so yes it is in the rules document we've got um and this is last year's but i don't think the actual content has changed simply the language that we have here so the, this part that starts with variables and types operators order of operations control flow that's your list that that you need to make sure to um, go over with the students. Hey, Adam, you're no longer sharing. Are you? Sh were you showing us a list? I'm just wondering what it. No, I'm just. I, it's on the rule sheet it, under uh, part one, multiple choice questions. There's a bullet point list there, so it is part of that document. Okay, I got it. I have that in my hand. Okay. Is there? Uh, I don't think there's more narrowing down I can do from that list. The one that starts with variables and types, correct? Yeah, that's the list I'm looking at. Variable. Right. Um, I don't order. think there's more narrowing down I can do from there. I think that in order to have success, students need to be familiar with all of these things. Now, that's a list of about, I mean, it's it's a dozen or so top level bullet points, and then some of them are broken down further. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think in order to be competent in pro in, in beginner programming, these are all things that students need to be exposed to. Just for clarity, we're talking about the formal event rules. Yes, That's the document that you're referring to. Correct. All right, we've got a few more questions being asked in the uh, chat session. All right. Uh, what do we got the, here? Uh, if you can't see them, I'll read them to you. I think um, I've. I think I've got it. Let's see. All right. Approximately how many questions in the multiple choice area? So I think we're uh, I'm going to be revising this or we're going to be revising this based on last year's test and we need to find last year's test now to make sure I, I don't plan to deviate much from that in the multiple choice. Um, I think there were 30. I think there were 30 questions on last year's multiple choice, if I recall correctly. OK, I'm probably going to stick close to that then with the idea being that some are are quite trivial some are sort of medium challenge and then some are more challenging where they have to track some program flow and really sort of know what's going on in the in the problems there i'd, I'd like to ask a follow-up question on this topic sure. adam which is you commented earlier about all questions being worth the same amount and i'm not confident that in fact that's how we implemented last year 
maybe, uh, maybe I, I'm I believe we. <laughs> I, I believe we allocated more points to the more difficult questions. Okay, and less, so I apologize. Less points to the less difficult questions. All right. I think that, let's see. I mean, we don't have the, the final test completed yet, but um, if that's what we did, then that's what we will continue to do. And I apologize for uh, being false with all of you. That's right. So John, John's here to keep me honest. <laughs> okay. Um, so can the pre-written page of notes be typed? Absolutely. I don't have any problem with that. As long as it's it, it, the the one page makes it so that they can't bring in a book on Python, essentially. <laughs> um, if, if you want to go with a very small font and have them type it and coach them to be able to use that as a reference, I think that's a very clever approach. And that is perfectly fine in, in bounds with the rules. Um, Sample questions on the test. Uh, John, do you want to tackle that one? We, we haven't released last year's test, or have we? Uh, we haven't released last year's test and we're not going to, but I do okay. believe that we actually have some example questions posted on the event page already. Okay, so if, if you'd like to see those, they're on the event page is my understanding. <laughs> um, there are many coding apps and sites, but most are info and then multiple choice structure. Then even more hands-on. Um, hands-on for students, I've, I've found Code Combat is the one that they really enjoy because it's sort of a game. Um, that's a nice one for learning concepts. The, um, W, do you have that one, John, the link to the event page? Example question is still in JavaScript. Yes. Um, okay. So we'll have to write some new sample questions and, and, uh, at least take the ones we have and convert them to Python, which is not, I mean, some of the references might actually do that, but, um, I'll make a note of that, that, uh, the sample questions need to be updated. I still might recommend taking a look at the ones in in JavaScript because the concepts will be helpful for what you have there. It's just the syntax will change slightly. And as I said, the programming concepts are what we're looking for here. Um, when when we're scoring the um, free response, the programming questions, um, certainly we're gonna wanna see it run. We're gonna want the syntax to be correct, but uh, there's gonna be partial credit given for the approach that they take to the actual problem solving aspect. So I think that's the, the lesson to be taken from that, but we'll look at updating those for Python. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. So for the person who's asking for a link to the event page, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the general website from Macomb Science Olympiad is macombso.org, and there's an elementary section, and once you're there, the, most of the background should be red. And um, if you can't find the event page for Code Warriors, then we're gonna worry about your, your computer skills. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, we so have... you'll, you'll be able to find it. Uh, 2022 event. I'm going to try and see if I can get a link posted in chat even so. I've got that. There we are. Yeah. All right. So there's it's there. So string manipulation is removed. Um, what do you what do you mean by that, Amy? Uh, I'm not sure what this to what this is referring. I, is string manipulation part of the scope that we have listed in our rules, Adam? Um, uh, take a look at the rules sheet. I'll have to bring up the copy of the rules myself. Let's see, string manipulation. It's in there. Um, it has not been string, removed. When we're talking string manipulation, I'm referring to something like substring, um, just taking parts of one string or other string operations, but no, that's not been removed. Not sure okay. where we heard that. So we have a couple of people who have raised their hand, Adam, who would like to ask questions. So if Eric would like to open his mic and ask his question, that'd be fine. Go. Yep, go for it. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric. Adam, Hi there. so for the, the, the hands-on piece of this, is it going to be, um, you know, are, are they sort of going to take everything that they've learned with the variable types, loops, uh, you know, and all that, uh, and put it together into a sort of a, you know, is, is the task going to be to sort of put that all together into one, operational you know program or is it going to be more you know do this task with this variable you know you know uh, build a loop that can do this function yeah. or more more the latter than the former um we're okay. not looking for them to make an entire project because obviously the time constraint and the age of the kids is for uh is under consideration as we're making this thing um last year i made three of these questions uh i thought that was an appropriate length it turned out to be slightly too long so that's why we're cutting it back to two but the questions themselves are not entire projects it is more along the lines of make this function that can uh do this thing 
essentially, without you know giving too much detail. Um, and and it is very clear on what exactly it needs to do. And in some cases, it's it can't do this; it must do this. Does that answer your question? It does. And I only have one more quick question. Sure. As far as you know, I'll just use variables as an, as an example. I mean, is it going to go into dictionaries, tuples that that deep or? You know, I'm just well, trying to prepare we, material uh, to appropriately cover all the topics. Right, right. I'm still in the process of converting this from JavaScript to Python. Um, that's going to be an ongoing uh, project in the next few months ahead of the event. But um, I expect off the top of my head, we'll probably cover tuples. But I think I think arrays should uh, have and, and lists should have the sufficient um, uh, content that we need so if you want to if you if you want to give them the you know up through arrays and lists and then um i'll take a closer look at these things uh dictionaries no would not be part of the scope here and then uh, i have a question about the objects talking about python classes um i'm not going to expect students to have to uh write their own object classes on this because that's a lot in Python. Python's just not very well designed for that. Um, and JavaScript isn't great at it either. But having an object that exists that they need to call a function on, I think is is in bounds here. So when I say objects, that's what I'm talking about doing there. Hopefully that covers that. All right, uh, Luke has his hand raised. He'd like to ask a question. Um, sure, go ahead, Luke. Um, it's Lena, I'm using my son's um, <laughs> account. Uh, but I am the coach of our schools and I don't know anything about coding. So I downloaded a bunch of apps with my child and we um, we worked at the same time and obviously he excelled way better than I did, which is great. But do you have any advice where I should start as someone who knows nothing um, in being in charge of teaching kids <laughs> about this? Well, um, I mean, it's it's a trick. There's so many answers to this question. Uh, I tried to put together that resource slide for somebody who's in your position uh, to look through W3 schools and to look through Code Academy because those are those contain lessons that are that are designed for somebody who's a complete beginner. Um, and so I think that would probably be the first thing I would say there. Um, it would not be the worst thing in the world, depending on the means and depending on the level of dedication that um, you know your child has to uh, learning how to code a personal tutor is not the worst idea in the world um, I, uh, the uh, but but the resources that we have online and, and the nature of being self-taught uh, definitely in the internet era definitely um, is is a promising one and, and you can do quite a lot in, in just a few months um, and then the other thing I would recommend is definitely come to the, the February 12th live event, because then if there's anything I do that's unclear, there's nothing quite like having somebody show it to you in real time and being able to ask questions on that front. So if anything's unclear there, then um, hopefully we can address it. And, and that'll I think that'll move your knowledge forward tremendously as a beginner. My advice is, uh, Adam, if I can jump in as being an event coach for uh, many times in the past is, Go ahead and dive in so that you have some personal experience before you get oh, yes. to that workshop and you'll ask much better questions if you've already maybe struggled a little bit and tried to work things out for yourself on some fronts uh, you'll get much more out of the workshop if you already have some experience yeah i 100 agree with that um to answer the question here python two or three it'll be python three um that's what the code academy uh, resource that I linked is using. That's what the compiler that we have is using. So Python 3, latest uh, <laughs> big version update. I know there's a 3.6, but latest big version update there. Uh, can you please show again in the screen the web pages we could use for learning? So um, I, I can, if you want to get ready to take a screenshot, I can share that again, but it will also be on the, um, uh, the We're website. Gonna Oh. We're going to post that document to our website within the next 24 hours. And so my my advice to you is wait okay. Okay. and yep. to, to the event coaches, just wait, be patient for less than a day and <laughs> you will have full access to that link with the hyperlinks active and it'll be a lot easier to use. But, but John, they want to get started now. Now yeah. I get them all excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there other questions? 
Can I have a question? My name's Connie. I'm one of the coaches. Um, when you do it online, because I'm a DOS based person from when uh -huh. I started. Um, <laughs> Me too. Are they, yeah, I go back a long ways. Um, when they write this, is it like take Peter and then in parentheses, move him left? in parentheses and then do something is that what they're basically going to be writing no there, there's, a, there, there's not going to be a um that sort of a structure where they have to manipulate something that exists we're talking about writing methods from scratch where we describe it um the uh well, can't do specific content away uh <laughs> but the the idea is more like if you have this situation uh modify this variable or give this output or return this value something of that sort uh it's not a a graphical user interface for what we have here it's going to be done can in you, a normal compiler can you compiler. give something on the website as like an example like more time that you have time to think about it but not give away what the question is really going to be sure uh, i think uh, and and John, this is uh, dependent on you know when I talk to you, but but since we're cutting down from three to two, I can probably use or modify a version of one of the the, the question that we end up cutting from last year, uh, and say, well, here this is a good sample question, and probably go there with it. But uh, that's yeah. uh, I'm not I'm not opposed to that. Okay, so we'll we, probably we, go that we way. In we in general don't give out copies of past tests because we are protecting the intellectual property that Adam provides us. Uh, but I don't have a problem with that, Adam. Okay, yeah. So I expect we'll be able to do that um, once I modify it for um, uh, Python instead of JavaScript. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Uh, every year we will do some solar system work. And every other year. If not, uh, well, we can wrap it up, Adam. Okay. Um, yeah. So if, if you have questions, um, they, we have an FAQs portion of our uh, site and we want to make sure that those are answered the same way for everybody. So they should be sent along. We have, what do we have, a form on the site or an email on the site for, uh, for, uh, for that, John? There is an FAQ section and you would uh, select the event that your question is, per, your per, that it pertains to. And then uh, that question goes to our event supervisor and so we, once we have an answer organized that goes with that question, it gets published on our website. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll we'll have it all happen uh, through that process. If you have further questions that you think of that you didn't have at the moment, otherwise we can bring the more detailed questions to our event on the twelfth. All right, thank you all so much for your time, and and uh, I think we are good. <laughs>